Hi friends, welcome to lecture 86 in our helicopter dynamics course. And this is going to be the last lecture in this course. We have come a long way and now we are just ending with a reference to composite materials. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now, a long time ago, maybe two, three decades ago, most of the helicopters used to be made of metals typically aluminum. But recently what has happened is that composite materials have become the primary material for helicopter rotor blade construction. Now, the advantages of composites are many fold. For example, they reduce specific weight, increase fatigue life, and provide designs with fewer parts. To put it in one sentence, Composites essentially have very good stiffness to weight ratio, and that's one of the reasons why they are often used. Now, composites result in increased service life and increased maintainability of the different flight vehicles which are used to manufacture them. Composites also let you generate different aerodynamic shapes, including variation in plan form, for example, tip sweep and so on. And these sections, thicknesses can be tailored with greater degree of flexibility through the use of composite materials. So these are some of the advantages of composite materials. Now let's take a look at a schematic of a typical helicopter blade. So here you have an airfoil section and essentially you have this region known as the composite skin. So of course here the thicknesses are amplified because of the drawing but in reality the skin is very thin and you have the skin here which is made of composite then there is a primary structure known as the box beam and this box beam is also made of composite here so there is some empty space here there is some empty space here this is typically filled with core or foam now you may have some tuning weight material placed here and certain amount of material to prevent erosion because of the wind coming from the front. Now, if you are serving in many different situations, you have sand and dust and so on, and there may be corrosion because of that. So some kind of metallic cover may be used here. Now, you also have these tuning masses or something like that, because actually from the dynamics perspective, there should be a certain weight of the helicopter blade. And when you are using composites, the weight may be very low and therefore you may need to use some kind of tuning material here or masses so that the weight is reasonably good so that the frequencies are all in the range which they should be in. Now composites are typically composed of fibers and plastics and we'll discuss that in more detail. Now composites have a directional nature. So what is meant by this is that Essentially, composites are put together by putting together a large number of plies. And for each ply, there is going to be a certain direction of the fibers. And these fibers are going to be strong in that direction in which they are going. So one thing that which we can do with composite materials is that we can construct rotor plates with different ply layups and different ply directions. We also can use a hybrid combination of materials which can lead to couplings between the different elastic modes of deformation. A typical composite structure is made by putting many plies together and each ply layup essentially has a different angle. So these angles may be zero degrees, plus minus 45 degrees, 90 degrees and so on. And the fibers are essentially made up of, of high stiffness materials such as we can use carbon, graphite, or we can use glass here. And the matrix or the remaining material which essentially keeps the fiber within itself is made of some kind of epoxy or resin. So this is essentially a plastic. So that is why this is also sometimes known as fiber reinforced plastics or FRPs. That's one type of composite which is widely used. Now, composite structures can be tailored to yield beneficial couplings, and this is one of the research topics which can often be studied. So now let's look at a box beam. Very often in 
literature, people use simple models of the box beam. For example, this is a very simple model because it's actually more complicated to use some model with different type of cross sections and all. Of course, there are software like VABS which can do that. But let's say we have a very simple model such as this. Now, what would happen is that if we take the top uh, part here of this box beam and we expand it, this would be something like 0, 0, 0, 45 plus uh, 45 minus 45 minus 45 minus 45 and so on or it could be 45 45 45 45 and um, this is typically symmetric so you have this and then there is a symmetric similarly up here so you would have 45 45 45 45 0 0 0 below this now you have these kind of layups here and if you create some unbalance between the top and bottom layer or the left and right layer then you can induce certain couplings into the helicopter blade. Now, some of this study was, for example, done by Smith and Chopra, and there are some papers on that you can look at. Now, how tailoring is done using composites is that the fibers are placed on the top and bottom of this uh, box beam type of section, and by creating certain lack of symmetry between the top and bottom or the left and right, parts of the box beam, you can generate coupling such as pitch flap coupling or pitch lag coupling and so on. So sometime you can create this coupling so that vibration comes down, sometime you can create this coupling such that damping increases specifically in the lag mode. Now there is a potential of improving the performance of various lifting surfaces by such tailoring. Now, essentially, we see that composite materials do permit this kind of tailoring of a structure. And this has been used in some designs, such as forward swept wings for a fixed wing, which essentially let us fly certain configurations because of the presence of this composite tailoring. Now, design in which materials and dimensions are selected to yield certain specific coupling characteristics could be caused as tailoring. And generally, this ends up enhancing the overall performance of the structure. The structural box is the primary stiffness carrying member and load carrying structure. So very often in simple models, people model the rotor blade as a box beam. But do remember that that's not a very accurate model because a helicopter blade is actually the skin plus the box beam. It's typically an airfoil section. And you need to do some complex cross-sectioning modeling to do that. Maybe you need to use some FEM software such as ANSYS or something like that. Now, the reason a box beam is used is that you need to have the helicopter blade to be quite stiff in torsion, and the box beam essentially can provide your torsional stiffness. Now, generally, composite rotor blades can be modeled using two approaches. Uh, FEM is there, and then there are the direct analytical methods. Now, FEM approach would capture a wide variety of non-classical effects, and there are many people who have worked on that. These methods are powerful, but they are slightly complicated. So just returning to the box beam, like I mentioned before, this kind of closed section, which is used here, this has high torsion stiffness and therefore high torsion frequency. So typically in a helicopter blade, you will use a closed section. So open sections are typically not used in these kind of composite problems for helicopters. Now, the analytical methods for composite box beam modeling or composite blade modeling, for example, they can be based on Vlasov theory. They often come from theories involving beams, involving plates, and involving classical laminated plate theory, or known as CLPT, which are discussed in detail in books on composite structures. Now, certain simplifying approximations are made, and then the equations are derived, which are valid for composites in most cases. Now, one of the reasons to use analytical methods is that these are computationally simple. They provide good relationship. You can get the composite stiffness matrix from these methods. And 
if you get the composite stiffness matrix you can take that matrix and put it into the beam problem which you can then use to construct the rotor blade dynamics now many people of course use fem model here so as time has gone by the modeling has become more and more sophisticated and better now some of the important non classical effects which are present in composites are torsion related warping and transfer shear and these are problems which need to be taken care of in many cases and therefore any simple model should actually include these effects if you are trying to capture them properly so one of the advantages of simpler model for composite box beam is they allow you to do some optimization methods and so on because if you are going to do optimization the computer time involved is an important factor and having very expensive methods based on numerical calculations may actually prohibit the use of optimization methods which themselves are quite time consuming now one of the things we have di discovered in our work on composite optimization is that these design spaces are multimodal and have local minima as well as global minima so it's important here to use some kind of algorithm which goes for global minimum point so this is certainly an important problem wherever you can use methods such as genetic algorithm particle swarm and so on because you have the presence of local minima you have discrete design variables being present for example you want to get the solution in terms of 0 degree plus minus 45 degree maybe plus minus 75 degree plus minus 30 degree you don't want the solution to come as 22.59 or 32.57 because generally speaking these kind of discrete layers are easier to manufacture and people like to have those layers the robustness issue is also important because any slight perturbation in the composite ply angle should not cause very substantial change in the stiffnesses because then that would substantially impact the vibration and the stability of the system so again robust design is also an important problem in composite rotor optimization and if you search some of these keywords in google scholar you are going to get several references including papers we have published where you can learn more about these topics and pursue further research in this path because this is a very important problem and this has become even more important because with the development of tilt rotors and some of these more recent flight configuration you have the issue of thick composites and so on also beside the thin wall composites which was considered in the previous years so i will stop this lecture today and i hope you enjoyed this class and i will probably make a final video on this subject to close this lecture series